you. Alright, we back at it. We gonna we gonna do some daily vlogs. Get y'all tuned in. As of right now, we nine weeks out. And um I'm about to hit legs. So what I'm gonna do for today, I'm taking in um, small meals, obviously throughout the day, uh, mainly in protein. I'm still currently shifting. Um, I'm kind of waiting on that final call for when I'm gonna actually exit out completely, but rice, not so much bread, but rice still a little bit in the mix. So I got rice thrown in my regimen along with um, my high protein meals. The rice is sprinkled in there, you know, throughout. Nothing that's affected me in a neck the, the way that I don't wanna see. Um, it's just definitely something that I feel I wanna keep in to the last, last, last minute. All right, some people take rice and things like that, the carbs all the way through. Everybody's body's a little different. Everybody knows themselves, however you know yourself. But, um, that's what it is. It's nine weeks. Today, Monday, August uh, 28th. August 28th. And um, yeah, we're going to see what this, this leg workout is feeling like. I already know I'm going to hit some leg press, you know, the usual things. Um, today, I'm going to hit up Anytime Fitness. I'm not going to go to goals. Right now, goals comes with a crazy crowd so I figured I'm gonna pull up to the spot with like little to no no extra heads I don't need to see nobody else crowding up the machines that I want to use so I'm gonna go ahead and hit up a gym that I'm guaranteed to get the machines if y'all know anything about any time it's definitely a gym that does not get crowded right 24 hours doesn't get crowded and I know when I'm trying to hit a specific workout, I got everything dialed in. I'm really looking forward to getting the machines that I want at the time that I want. But I'm gonna hit it up. It's gonna be at least three, four exercises. Um, three to four exercises, anywhere between three to four sets. I always hit up a warm up set um, beforehand. Actually, it's three warm up sets. I usually start out with um, a lightweight and I hit a low amount of repetitions all right so again I start with a lightweight and I hit with low reps so lightweight I'll do 10 reps I make it a little heavier and then I do 12 I make it a little heavier then I do 15 some people go the other way around they actually start out with the lightweight and they go really really high in repetitions and then they narrow down those repetitions as the weight increases. For me, I found that it works better for me the opposite way because I'm warming up. I don't need to do a lot when I just got started, even if the weight is light. I'm not looking to do a lot, a lot of repetitions, none of that. So I start with lightweight, low reps. As I increase the weight, I increase the reps. Now. As I get higher and higher up to the weight that I want to see, usually I'll drop the reps to whatever amount I feel I need to work with for that weight. I don't really, you know, you don't want to get too crazy with it and continue going up in weight expecting to do more and more repetitions. Eventually you hit a point where you're going to have to dial your repetitions down just a smidge to make sure you execute the regimen that you have dialed in with whatever you have programmed. So for legs, I'm gonna do that. What I also do on my leg days is I do abdominals and I do calves. For abdominals, I hit it just like I hit shoulders, all right? I hit my obliques on one separate exercise. I hit my upper abs on another exercise. I hit my lower abs on another exercise and a place that a lot of people, I say a lot of people, I don't know who does and who doesn't, right? 
But a place that me personally, myself, used to leave out was the lower back. I, you want, I personally like to execute all the areas in that core area, right? Upper abs, lower abs, obliques, and lower back. So you hit back, front, and sides. When it comes down to the lower back, all I'm talking about is jumping on the hyperextension machine and um, putting your lower back to some work, right? You could do it without weights. You could do it with lightweight, moderate. And I encourage you, I don't care what you do. I don't encourage you to do anything. Just do whatever you're going to do. But I know with me, personally, my experience, heavyweight was not my thing. With um, Heavyweight was not my thing with uh, hy the hyperextension machine trying to work my lower back. I found no weight or very lightweight was what worked best for me personally. You do you, whatever works for you. All right? Um, that's how I touch base with abs. Calves, it's a similar idea. Um, the biggest thing you could do with calves is you could get a different machine. I like to choose different calf machines. In this case, hitting up Anytime Fitness, the most you could do is um, you don't really ever have calf machines unless you hit up a goals gym. When I say doing different calf machines, I'm basically talking about hitting the leg press and you know changing the machine to make it work for you so you actually work your calves all right you know you change the range of motion push it all the way back make sure your calves get a nice decent extension and then you just work at it the most you could do in that case a lot of people like to say that they like to put their toes in put their toes equal or parallel and then they like to point their toes out different things like that a lot of people like to throw in I personally don't add in all the extra. The most I do whenever I change my calf exercises, I'm just looking for something different. I'm not necessarily going for X, Y, and Z just because it's going to make my calves look a certain way. My calves will look how the genetic potential will allow it to, uh, to look. So I'm not worried about that. I do understand that the calf will take on a certain shape. Like you might notice your soleus coming out more if you hit see the calf raise is heavy it doesn't change the muscle doesn't change itself it's, it's whatever your genetics make it however it makes it look is what it's going to look like but you might notice that it might be hanging out a little bit more the size might just be a tad bit more bigger to your liking and that's hitting the seated the calf raise um just to get a little difference on the look of the calf all right um, so that's the most I do. If I add in any extra calf exercises, I'm only talking about hitting the, um, a basic uh, leg press. You can also do like the Smith machine, put a stepper under the Smith machine, get under the bar, line it up, get your calves extended, and then we'll go at it. So instantly you could dial in a bunch of different exercises for calves. You don't really have to um, stick to the two main ones, which is your calf raise, you see the calf raise and you're, you're standing calf raise. But when you hit goals in places like that, you get the donkey calf raise, the regular calf raise, the seated calf raise. They might have like other machines that might help or work on the calves even more. But it's really about, um, it's really about what goals you go to because some of them, some of them ain't all the way up to date. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You probably go to one right now, don't know nothing that I'm talking about because your goals ain't update yet. But uh, that's what it is, man. I'm pulling up right now. I'm going to touch base with y'all. Probably at like a meal or something like that. I don't, I don't even really know. But I'm going um, I'm to touch down with y'all again. I just want to make sure I'm dialing in. Um, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to write what I'm doing out. I, I do to some degree. But I'd rather do the, the, log, the vlog and all of that. It just makes it easier for me to watch. I found it very useful for me to actually be able to go back on some of my old footage and check out some of the things that I was doing and, re and remind myself that um, this, 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 and this works, you know? I didn't think about certain things that I was doing. It's just time flies, right? You got other things going on. So some things I was doing, helping to dial in that body fat to the, to the percentage that I want, helping to build muscle to the degree that I want, that all started actually happening at a certain point during my last prep. 
and I was doing certain things. I found it very useful again to like check in and see um what uh what I was actually doing. But let me get in here, man. I don't really have that much time because gotta pick up the kids. Y'all know what it is. I'll touch back with y'all in a minute. Yeah. Yo, we back at it again. So y'all know what it is. Y'all see me in the kitchen. Y'all know your boy's cooking. So check me out. What I did is I'm I'm uh, I'ma give y'all a idea of what I usually have after the gym. Alright? Everybody goes different routes after the gym, depending on what your goal is, what you're trying to accomplish. You should aim and target different types of foods after the gym for recovery, for fat loss, whatever it is. I decided to choose this. So we're going to dive into it real quick. I'm going to show y'all my choice, why I chose it. I'm going to give y'all a little insight, a little special report. But y'all know what it is. Check me out. Boom. So right here, what we got, I got the grilled chicken breast. All right. It's actually grilled chicken um, in the little tenderloins. Um, it's not the chicken breast, actually. What I find is more tasty is the chicken in this style. Whenever you go to the chicken breast route, when you season the chicken, it's hard to get that flavor to come out. You know, the, the meat be so thick. So I find I can get more flavor with this right here. Same benefit in protein, not as much fat. And what I did is I combined it with another type of rice, right? Got the brown rice on the side with the broccoli in it. And it got little turkey bites. 99% fat free turkey is inside my rice right here to tack on a little bit of extra protein, a little bit of extra aminos. Y'all know what it is. And then we got the white rice, all right? The foundation. That's the carbs that's going to beef you up, all right? That's what I'm talking about. When you talking about putting on muscle, mass, trying to gain size, you going to need this right here, all right? So this is what I'm going to do right after the gym. If you want to know the numbers, it's six ounces of chicken. I got half a cup of rice. Matter of fact, it's a quarter cup of um, this one right here. And then a quarter cup of this one right here is coming out to like a half a cup. I'm going to hit up another meal in the next few hours. Most likely, it'll be the, a protein shake to top off my aminos that's missing or um, any protein that might not be all the way there. We're gonna seal the deal with that protein shake coming up in a few hours. But y'all know what it is. I'm about to throw this joint in the microwave. Bruh, about to be over. Yeah. Yo. All right. Uh, we leaving Target right now. Let me give y'all a quick update on um, the day and the time. So we are on Thursday, just hit legs. I'm gonna do the usual things as far as food intake, everything like that goes. I'm just bringing you up to speed where everything is at and that's really it. Um, legs, we hit the basics, leg press, um, squats, we hit um, leg extension. I try to get in some deadlifts because I like deadlifts on my leg days, but I didn't get um I didn't get a chance. There was a guy in there doing some. He was using the bar, so I was like, "All right, cool." I waited my whole workout for bro, and he never he never came through with the um with letting up on the uh, the bar. He kept it the whole time, so. A whole 30 minutes, he held down the bar and said, this cool. It's probably that my sign for me to not use it. So I'll squeeze it in next workout. I never sweat it like that. It is what it is. Just keep it moving. Um, I hit abs. I hit calves. Those are the usual things I do on my leg days. So I'm really not worried about today. Today ended up being a good day. Got all my workouts in. Got all my um, eating stuff down. Everything is in line. We're still on nine weeks out. So today, like I said, it's Thursday, August uh, 31st. And um, closing off the night with my leg workout and the usual things. Um, I don't really got too much to fill y'all in on on this one. Uh, my weight still, it is what it is. It's right around about the same. It's been a few days. The waist not budging as fast, but it's moving down. 
And that's it, man. I don't really have too much else to really fill y'all in on. I'm going to try to get workouts and stuff like that just so y'all have an idea. If I get the chance to um, show y'all my grocery run, I'll show y'all the grocery run just so y'all have a good idea of what I'm, what I'm shopping for, what I'm doing to actually bring the body fat down. For the most part, cardio is in line, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, um, somewhere around there. Don't really want to push the hour just yet. Got to wait on that in, in due time as we get closer to the show day. That's around about where I'll be squeezing in an hour's cardio, um, possibly in the morning or in the night, somewhere, wherever I feel is necessary. But let me get up off this one, man. I don't want to hold y'all up too long. We're going, um, we're going to close it here. And um, I'm going to check back, back in with y'all probably tomorrow on chest day. So I got chest and tries tomorrow. I'm going to check back in with y'all. Depending on where I do it, I may or may not film. We'll see kind of how it all plays out. Y'all know what it is. I'm out. Yeah. Yo. All right. So we're going to conclude um, week nine on this video. This is going to be the last video for week nine. And basically, everything is looking good. Um, weight is just barely going down by like a pound or two. Um on the good side, body fat's going down. Um, so I'm right where I want to be. So nine more weeks. And, um, you know, we completed a good week. All the cardio was done. All the weights was done. Um, did the basics with the uh, weights yesterday. I hit shoulders, back, and biceps all in the same day. That's how I usually like to do it. I throw in traps, I throw in forearms, um, all that stuff. So all of that was completed. Um, I'm gonna make next week's video more detailed. Like, you know, I'm gonna put in more meals, probably throw in a little workout or something like that. But a little sprinkle of something every time is how I'm gonna do it. I'm not going to just do the same every time um, with the same layout, same structure. I want to make each video just a little bit different. And um, I thought this one was good to finish up right here where I'm just filling y'all in on how I'm doing things day by day and how I'm bringing the body fat down. When I show y'all the meals and stuff like that, maybe that side will make more sense to you. Um, how it's being laid out as far as protein, fats, and carbs go, the idea behind all of what I'm doing at the end of the day is just to remain in the deficit until you're ready to come up out the water, all right? Um, when you come up out the deficit, you know, it, you know it and you feel it, you know? Because when you're on prep, You'll, you'll still eat, but you'll still feel like, almost like you didn't eat. And it's just the way that it, the way that it works. It's feeding the body, preserving muscle, but still trying to keep the body in a deficit. That's the main idea behind it all. So, with that in mind, that's the idea. That's where I want to be at. That's what I want to kind of do for the next few weeks. I'm kind of putting myself into that deficit for a few days. Now, I don't really dial in a certain amount of days. I always do my routines, my structures, or my structure to my programs in different ways. And it's always based on how I feel. My job itself is a very physical job. So I can't really tell on a day-to-day -day even how many calories I'm gonna burn. And that always connects with how many calories you probably need to consume. That also connects with how hard you wanna actually go in the gym. And I, I kinda connect all these things in one shot and make sure they're all in line, all right? I don't want anything overdone. I don't want anything underdone. So, stay in the deficit, easy, 
Make sure your carbs, protein, and fats are in line while in the deficit to keep your body in a fat burning state. And what I mean by that, I'm gonna talk to y'all a little bit. What I mean by that is a lot of people like to stay in a deficit, but they're eating the wrong things, right? So some people just naturally just don't eat anything. They just don't eat. But then they might have something as simple as a small order of french fries. Now, even with that order of french fries, it might seem fattening and high in carbohydrates, but after someone consumes french fries, if that's the only thing that they have, they're most likely gonna remain in a deficit. All right, the caloric deficit means that you're under maintenance. You're under maintenance. If you're under maintenance and you're sitting in that deficit, if you're eating things that are high in sugar, or high in uh, fat, you just position yourself or your body, you just position yourself or your body to uh, to wanna um, rely on those things for its fuel source and it kicks it out of, um, it puts it in a position where you're not burning fat your body has to take care of that little bit that's coming in the sugary whatever so let me give you a good comparison real quick so if you were to take in like let's say you know some candy something high sugary cake cookies things like that um french fries even though french fries is not high in sugar it's still up there in what you probably don't want to have um but even though the person is in a deficit they consume a high sugary food the body's going to want to handle that sugar the sugar comes into the body like a like a toxin and your body needs to go ahead and get rid of it so it works on getting rid of that now in that time in that time that your body's trying to metabolize take care of the sugar you could be burning fat or you could be taking some of the calories that you consume and turn that into energy, which that energy could then be metabolized and used to burn fat. That happens when you take in high protein meals. Right? The high protein meals hit a lot harder in the area of fat loss in comparison to high sugary foods, even though you're in a deficit. Now, at the end of the day, if you're set to lose a certain amount of weight, you're most likely still gonna hit that goal, but hitting it faster or going deeper, let's say you wanna lose one pound, let's try and hit one and a half to two, that'll happen with a high protein meal. Hitting the one pound, that'll happen with your sugary meal just because maybe at some point in time, your body decided to metabolize the sugary food and not deal so much mainly with burning fat. If you take in a high protein meal, especially remaining in a deficit that's the idea behind prep that's what leads your body to driving into like it just turns into a fat burning machine where that's all it wants to do that's all it thinks that's all it wants to handle that's where you want to be but let me get up off this one it's the last video this week nine right here um and then we're going to start the week the series for week eight and i'm gonna see what i'm gonna sprinkle in there like i said whether it be like workouts or just the meals that I'm having, some of that nature. I'm gonna make sure I give y'all more details on how we taking this home, this, this one home. But yeah, let me get up off this one. Y'all know what it is. It's your boy, I'm out.